Welcome back to ASEAN News, and here is the compilation for today. Flood victims recall waves of destruction in Indonesia. A survivor of Indonesia's flash floods recalls the destruction that leveled his own home in Indonesia's East Nusa Tenggara province. The flash floods, triggered by a tropical cyclone, hit eastern Indonesia and neighboring East Timor and killing over 100 people. Rescuers are still in the midst of searching for dozens of missing residents. Around 2 a.m. we hear rumbles and later we could smell mud while we were all in the house. I ask my family to prepare as the rumbling sound keeps getting closer and I look over at the river and I can hear more of the rumbling sound. I go to the main street and there I see the flash floods coming in. <laughs> Local environmentalist Dominico Scarangola blames global warming for the excessive flooding. Thousands of people have been displaced and near 2,000 buildings, including a hospital, are impacted and more than 100 homes heavily damaged by the cyclone. Jokowi visits disaster areas after floods due to heavy rains in Indonesia. Indonesia's President Joko Widodo says he hopes to relocate communities affected by flooding and landslides after a tropical cyclone triggered extreme weather, leaving at least 163 dead and displacing thousands more. He makes the comment during a visit to survey recovery efforts in East Nusa Tenggara province where 45 people remain missing. From the data I received just this afternoon, the total number of victims in East Nusa Tenggara is 163 dead, with 45 still missing. We'll keep trying to find those who are missing. The head of state affirms the needs of displaced people are being met in the area he visits, although access is blocked by large boulders. Rescuers searching for missing people and rushing in aid to island in East Nusa Tenggara province after Saroja lashed the area with rain, floods and landslides. Workers remove more bodies from the debris. It happened when Indonesia's weather agency warned that a second tropical cyclone within a week could trigger floods and landslides in more central areas. President of the Philippines reappearing after two weeks hiatus in a public. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte reappears in public after an absence of nearly two weeks which had fueled concerns about his health that the government insists are unfounded. The Philippines is battling one of the worst coronavirus outbreaks in Asia, with hospitals in the capital Manila overwhelmed amid record daily infections while authorities face delay in delivery of COVID-19 vaccines. Duterte, who is 76 and has not yet been vaccinated against COVID-19, resumed his weekly televised address during which he dismissed rumors that he was in declining health and that the government was trying to keep his condition under wraps. To prove Duterte was well, his closest aide, Christopher Bong, a senator, posted images on social media of the president playing golf, riding a motorcycle, and jogging in the presidential palace over the weekend. Duterte last appeared on television on March 29. He cancelled his address scheduled on April 7 to minimize his exposure as there had been an increase in active cases of COVID-19 among his staff, including some of his security detail. The Singapore company Otsau provides two robots to deliver food to customers with the aim of preventing transmission in the country.
Little Robots roam Singapore neighborhood, delivering groceries, parcels, and turning heads of curious onlookers as they trundle their way to awaiting customers. Two robots calls Camelo. The autonomous delivery robots, created by local technology company Otsau, are giving a helping hand to around 700 households in a residential area for a trial. They will bring shoppers items they buy online from a nearby supermarket as well as online shops parcel at no extra cost. There is no fixed delivery schedule and buyers can specify what time they want to receive their purchase after the package is loaded into the robot. It's equipped with 3D sensor camera and two internal weatherproof compartments, each which can carry a maximum 20 kilograms at once. In addition, Otso says they are currently in talks with other companies to expand their scale and role of their robots and hope to roll out more to cover more areas in the city-state. The creators of Camelo, the growing interest in the contactless transaction due to the coronavirus pandemic has been encouraging. Papua New Guinea's health minister said the presence of the Facebook application could and dangerous vaccine in the world. Not to take the vaccine first is to show our people, especially our health. Papua New Guinea's health minister says misinformation shared on Facebook is the biggest threat to its COVID-19 vaccine plan. Therefore, social media giant must take steps to stop it. I think Facebook is is our biggest uh, conspiracy theorist uh, platform. Um, before, you know, they go through the proper channels where uh, they can, if they have a vaccine, like just for example, someone has a vaccine, someone has a type of vaccine or a type of medication that may help people and they've used it in the bush, you know, bush, bush type medicine. So we have protocols, we we'll bring it down to NDOH, it goes through the scientific system. It goes through the WHO, they check it all out and then they send it back to you and say, yes, you can use that. But no, these people go straight to Facebook, use Facebook as their advertising point, which Facebook gives them the opportunity to do, and then they sell it on the streets. This is dangerous, this is very dangerous. Facebook has a lot of influence here and they need to be held responsible for some of the, the information that they leak out. Like most of it, if if I if I take you through Facebook now, some of the stuff that it is unbelievably not true. Speaking at the Lowy Institute talk, Wong says people should not rely on information on Facebook to guide their approach to vaccines. Facebook is not vocal about its efforts to take down coronavirus misinformation as well as promote public health and government accounts as credible information sources. Wong's comments come as false claim and conspiracies about the coronavirus and vaccines have proliferated on social media platforms during the pandemic. To dispel worries about the vaccine, Wong and PNG Prime Minister James Marape and several other public figures take the AstraZeneca vaccine. Papua New Guinea, a country of 10 million that was administered by Australia before gaining independence, has so far received 8,000 vaccine doses from Australia's supply. Papua New Guinea had recorded just over 6,100 cases and 60 deaths, latest available figures shows. But Australia says that Tele vastly underestimated the extent of the crisis as the island does not do mass testing. Papua New Guinea has imposed a series of lockdown measures amid concerns of research will strain its health system beyond capacity. You know that this vaccine will help them in the future. Japan protesters protest against government decisions about radioactive water into the sea. People from Fukushima Prefecture gathers to protest against the Japanese government's decision to dispose of radioactive wastewater from the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant into the Pacific Ocean. The Japanese government will formally make the announcement to discharge the nuclear sewage into the Pacific Ocean. Many locals gather in front of the Japanese Prime Minister's residence to protest this decision. The protester says they will gather again to stage another protest before the official announcement. The Japanese government has always declared that the treatment plan for the diluted nuclear sewage to be discharged into the sea is safe 
and used the term treated water to dilute the public's negative impression of nuclear sewage. Tokyo Electric Power Company, the operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, did not announce to the outside world the fact that the nuclear sewage contains the radioactive isotope carbon-14 until August last year. The half-life of carbon-14 is as long as 5,730 years, which means it is very likely to cause long-term damage to the health of people globally. South Korea and United States signed their defense cost-sharing deal in Seoul. The agreement sees South Korea to a 13.9 increase in its contribution to the cost of hosting some 28,500 United States troops for 2021, the biggest annual rise in nearly two decades after United States calls for greater funding. South Korea's Vice Foreign Minister Choi jong kook and Rob Repson charged the affairs of the United States Embassy to the Seoul, attend a formal signing ceremony at the Foreign Ministry in Seoul and sign the deal called the Special Measures Agreement. The increase under the multi-year pact takes South Korea's contribution for 2021 to 1.18 trillion win or $1.5 billion and settles a long-running dispute and that had strained ties between Seoul and Washington during Donald Trump's presidency. American troops are deployed to South Korea in what is seen as deterrent to Pyongyang that also sends a message to China about United States' influence and capability in Asia. Iran and South Korea hope for a revival of bilateral relations. Iran and South Korea says they hope for a revival of their bilateral relationships after the United States sanctions cause a precipitous drop in Iranian exports to South Korea and Iranian funds are frozen in South Korean banks. <laughs> I wanted to state that my trip to Iran is a sign of strong commitment by South Korea to expand a bilateral vision for the future, South Korean Prime Minister Chung Sia Kyung told a journalist during his visit to Tehran. Speaking after meeting with Iranian Vice President Eshak Jahangiri, Chang says the two countries are trying to swiftly expand bilateral cooperation in any field as soon as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action is revived. The meeting comes two days after Iran released a South Korean ship and its captain detained since January. A South Korean official says that South Korea had promised to try to secure the release of Iranian funds frozen in South Korean banks under United States sanctions. The seizure of the tanker in the Strait of Hormuz of Oman in January had triggered a diplomatic dispute after Iran demanded that South Korea released $7 billion in funds frozen in South Korean banks under United States sanctions. Myanmar police patrolling in the public houses area in Bago, Myanmar after the death of 10 people. Footage shows armed Myanmar police officers patrolling a residential area in Bago, Myanmar, where reports says at least 10 people have been killed in recent days. A social media user says that people in the residential area had fled or had been arrested. Witnesses and news reports says troops fire rifle grenades at anti-coup protesters in the town of Bago near Yangon. At least 10 people were killed and their bodies pile up inside a pagoda. Meanwhile, an online news magazine says at least 20 people were killed and many wounded. More than 1,600 people have been killed by security forces cracking down on protest against the coup, according to an activist group. The country has ground to a standstill because of the protest and widespread strikes against military rule. The military rulers, who overthrew an elected government, says that a protest campaign against its rule was dwindling because of people wanted peace and that it will hold elections within two years, the first time frame it has given for a return to democracy. Protesters continue to march in Myanmar protests against the military junta.
Anti-coup protesters continue to gather to demonstrate against Myanmar military junta despite its claims that a protest campaign against its rule was dwindling. Videos filmed by Dawei Watch shows protesters in the southern city of Dawei marching with flags and chanting slogans. Additional footage from neighboring Longlong shows people marching with flags printed with three-finger salute in what has now become a symbol of resistance to army rule. Government ministers will resume full operations, soon a junta spokesman tells a news conference in the capital, Naipitiao. More than 600 people have been killed by security forces cracking down on protest against the February 1st coup, in which the military ousted an elected government of Aung San Suu Kyi. The Southeast Asian nation has ground to a standstill because of the protest campaign and widespread strikes against military rule. Thank you for watching, stay safe, stay healthy and have a nice weekend.